Hello students. Today we are going to start with the neural tissue that is the last type of tissue found in human body we are discussing but this neural tissue was originated in one phylum first phylum to develop the nervous tissue the neurons the nerve cell that was cylindrata right from the cylindrates the nervous system evolved too much and from the petty helminths they had ladder like nervous system and this way the nervous system undergo evolution and now we are going to have the most complex type of nervous system so in case of the phylum porifera remember i already have told you that the phylum porifera lack the nervous system so that's why they grouped under a separate sub kingdom and what was that that was parasaur right from the cylindrates up to the class mammalia all of us we are going to have this sensibility or we develop this responsiveness towards the environmental stimulus and that one that is actually because of the nervous tissue okay so remember that one so that's why right from cylindrates up to the mammals we are grouped under the advanced animals or advanced group of animal they're known as the different sub kingdom that is known as the eumetazoa okay so just this point is the first point of the animal kingdom itself so let's just see the nervous tissue what is that what actually form the nervous tissue everything so first thing we should know about the nervous system that nervous tissue exerts the greatest control over over the body's responsiveness to changing condition okay so just see if suppose something is happening around us okay suppose you're watching the video so how can you watch the video because our eyes are able to see that so how our eyes able to um under able to give us the information that yes this is this letter or this is this word this is this picture how is this possible how we can see around us because of the nervous tissue because of the eye right so first of all how actually this is happening i just need to tell you that if the light falls on that object then from the object this light will enter into our eye in the retina of the eye the light the light falls the light rays fall and after that the light rays comes outside okay reflected back or um, it's reflecting back in case of uh, some organisms uh, like the dog like cat it seems like their eyes are lightening in the night in the nocturnal animal this happens but in case of us what happen our choroid layer take this light absorb this light everything we are going to discuss later now what happened this retina which have some photoreceptor cell they are known as rods and cones they change this light energy into electrical impulse so the sensory organs are nothing but can convert any form of energy into electrical impulse that's all our eye can't see okay our eye will be just one organ who can convert that form of energy that is light energy into electrical impulse now from this eye this optic nerve will carry that sensation that electrical impulse due to the falling of the light that impulse to the brain in the brain we have some optic uh, ganglion some optic lobes are there and those optic lobes can able to decode what electrical impulse is actually carrying okay then after that we can able to understand what we have seen okay understand what color what intensity how that all this information actually is bring about by the brain in the brain we have the condensed nerve nerves neurons actually so what is the nerve and neuron gray matter white matter ganglion everything i'm going to tell you later just in this video itself so let's just see what is that first thing it is specialized to transmit the impulse so what happened you already have studied one thing one point about the synapse right so what is synapse actually synapse is actually a space between two neuron right 
So in between two neurons, this is one neuron, this is another neuron. In between two neurons, what we have a space, right? In that space, we don't have anything. So how is it possible? Suppose this neuron is carrying the impulse towards the end. How this neuron will receive the stimulus? Actually, with the help of some chemicals, they're known as neurotransmitters. And neurotransmitters in that synapse region, they will transmit the impulse. So synapse, presence of synapse is also very unique to the nervous tissue, right? So let us see one point. Let me tell you one very interesting point that the neurons can never divide. Okay, that means we are born with a constant number of neuron. We are going to die with the constant number of neuron. Neuron will not going to multiply. They cannot undergo division. Okay, one neuron cannot form two neuron. Understand that point? Now, if why the neurons cannot divide? Because uh, we know one thing that whenever the cells divide, it requires one spindle fiber, right? You have studied about mitosis meiosis in class eight or nine, I guess. So what happened whenever the cells divide, they require mitotic spindle, right? So spindle fiber have to be formed so that the nucleus, the chromosomes can go detached, separate from each other and can go to the poles and in the middle, the cell can divide and to form two cell, okay? That mitotic spindle is formed from one specific cell organelle that is known as centriole, right? And that centriole is absent in the nervous tissue. So nervous tissue lack the centriole, due to the lack of the centriole, the neuron can never divide. Understand? So if the neurons can never divide, then what will happen to us? If suppose some neuron dies, right? Then that space will be emptied forever. What will happen to us, right? So this is one point. One thing you need to know that in our brain, basically it is made up of nervous tissue. Outside we have the memories that's different. We also heard one point that suppose one individual suffers from being brain cancer, right? Now the neurons can never divide due to the lack of centriole. You understood now? Brain have neurons and what is cancer? Uncontrolled growth number division of the cell. Now, if the neuron are present in the brain, brain have only the neurons, neurons can never divide, then which is causing brain cancer, right? So this is one very interesting thing that as this neuron neurons have this problem that this advantage we can say that the neurons can never divide so that's why what happened it requires some supporting cells right so if suppose some neurons die suppose due to any case due to the metabolic case suppose it had died then that space will be taken over by some another cells. They're known as the glial cell or supporting cells, which have lots of other functions too, okay? So I will tell you what is that, okay? So that's why this nervous tissue will be made up of two type of cell. One is neuron. One thing is neuron, that neuron form gray matter, white matter, ganglion, nerve, everything. And as the neurons cannot divide, to, that's why to support, to assist the nervous system, what we have, glial cells, right? Glial cells are the supporting cells. So let's just classify the nervous tissue, okay? So this nervous tissue is divided into two types. What are they? What are they? These are the neurons, right? The neurons and glial cells. Glial cells or we can also call this as, as the supporting cell, right? The neurons which have two parts, what are they? One is the cell part, the cell part means the, okay, cell part or what we can, cell body we can say, okay, cell body or we can call cyton, we can call pericarion, okay, etc. And it is going to have the fibers, right? We are going to have two type of fibers. What are they? One is exon, another is dendrite. Okay, so that's all about the neuron. So one neuron is going to have the, suppose this is the neuron. This will be the dendrites. 
this is the cytone and this is going to be the axon understand they're going to have the nucleus so this part that will be cytone this one and this one these are the fiber okay this is then right this is axon okay so this is about the neuron now to support or to assess the nervous system what i said this nervous system also have the supporting cell or the glial cell what are they see we are going to have astrocyte which is the largest glial cell then we have the micro glial cell which is the smallest type of glial cell we are going to have oligodendrite okay and the last type this is known as the ependymal cell okay so this type of four types of apart from four types another type of supporting cells are also here let us give you an example whenever you have drawn this neuron have you drawn some structures like this what are this these are the these are the swan cells right so what do swan cells actually this swan cells are also the glial cells okay so whenever the neurons are present to form this actually i will tell you what is that this swan cells form this myelin sheet that act as an insulator so that the nerve stimulus can jump from one neuron one uh, node of ring wire to the next node of ring wire so that's why what they have the swan cells swan cells are going to assist the neuron so that it can undergo faster conduction right so this way we are going to have the neuron and the glial cells in supporting cell so let's just move to the function of all of the glial cell right so just see if it is the glial cell they are performing different functions so first thing if it is the astrocyte it will basically assist the neurons if some post some of the neurons die then it will help in repairing the nervous tissue okay so that is the function of astrocyte it's just like a star aster starfish you know already what is those things actually this astrocyte means it's the star like cell which is also a very important thing you need to know it is the largest one okay so it is the largest glial cell astrocyte which help in repairing the nervous tissue next one microglial cell which is the smallest okay and it basically helps in phagocytosis phagocytosis means it engulf the foreign particle and kill it okay so microglial cell actually nothing but have some immunological function okay like in our blood the wbcs macrophages okay these things are present in the nervous tissue we have the microglial cell right next one oligodendrite so oligodendrite form the myelin sheet so here what we have seen the swan cell swan cell form the myelin sheet in the rest of the part of the body uh, in case of this uh, cns central nervous system in cns in the central nervous system that means the brain and the spinal cord this oligodendrite form the myelin sheet the swan cells are present in the rest of the nerve in the peripheral nervous system autonomic nervous system and in the cns central nervous system that means in the brain and in the spinal cord this uh, oligodendrites that form the that form the myelin sheet right next one see the ependymal cell very much important it create the csf what is the full form of csf csf means cerebro spinal fluid okay so cerebro spinal fluid is formed from the ependymal cell so that is about the glial cell now just see this is the neuron right so this neuron form uh, in different combination it form the uh, the ganglion the nerve fiber the white matter gray matter everything whenever you see the brain okay suppose this is the brain okay 
so whenever it comes to the brain what happened towards the periphery okay towards the periphery we see a dark gray color okay and in the spinal cord centrally there is a gray colored structure present okay and in the center white matter that means white color is appeared okay and in the spinal cord peripherally white matter is appeared so what is that gray matter white matter ganglion and nerve fiber right so just see suppose these are the two combination okay this is one neuron now if the neurons are horizontally present this is the horizontal combination okay this is the oh, this is the vertical combination okay now this one is the horizontal combination okay and this one is the vertical combination right now if the neurons are vertically present one above another then what we will see this cytons this cytons will form the ganglion now what is ganglion i will tell you whenever we will discuss the neural system nervous system whenever i will discuss then i will tell you what is ganglion the optic lobes auditory lobes olfactory lobes what are those these are nothing but the ganglions right now you can see from the ganglions what will happen the bundle of nerve fiber that means bundle of exons comes outside it is enshaded by a thick cover that is connective tissue so what is that that will be the nerve so we call we used to call the nerve 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 is in what is that nerve actually it is nothing but bundle of the nerve bundle of the fibers like exon if it is then yes exon uh, fiber is also present exonic nerve fiber is there that is known as efferent nerve fiber dendritic nerve fiber is also there that will be known as the efferent nerve fiber right now if the neurons are present horizontally one after another then what will happen this one this neuron where the cytons are there that will appear dark that means it will appear gray in color so that's why it's the gray matter which is present peripherally in the brain and centrally in the spinal cord and this nerve fiber which is because of this myelin sheet it appears white so that's why it is known as white matter which is present centrally in the brain and peripherally in the spinal cord so that is about just the gray matter white matter ganglion and the nerve now i will tell you in detail the structure of one neuron and the nerve cross section how actually it appears right so that's all about the first part just write it down now let us move to the types of neuron okay so there are five type of neurons present depending upon the fibers coming projecting out of the cell body or the cyton so just see if it is coming to the types of neuron they are, they are basically of five type what are the apolar type of neuron so this apolar type of neuron don't have any projection it is going to have only that cyton or perikaryon okay so what happened this apolar type of neuron which is just the cell body which don't have any fibers exons or dendrites coming out of it what is that known as that is known as apolar type of neuron and that apolar type of neuron is present in case of the non cordates like we understand in case of cylindrates for the first time neurons appear so that is actually the apolar type of neuron second type of neuron is known as unipolar type of neuron which have only one projection coming out of the cyton and this one unipolar neuron was actually present in case of human body also that is in the embryonic state so in the embryonic state of the vertebrates including man we have the unipolar type of neuron but gradually whenever the embryonic development will proceed the unipolar neuron will also means modify into a multipolar type of neuron right next one pseudo unipolar type of neuron actually there's a uh, 
Pseudo means fall, unipolar. That means it is a false unipolar, but actually this is a bipolar neuron. Okay. So it seems like having one projection, but soon after that projection coming out of the cytone, it bifurcates. Right. So what is that? This is known as the pseudo unipolar type of neuron. For now, just remember it is present in the dorsal root ganglion of the spinal cord. So what is dorsal root ganglion of the spinal cord? Everything we will discuss whenever we will see, discuss the nervous system. For now, just remember dorsal root ganglion. What is ganglion? You already understand. It is the cluster of the cytone only, isn't it? So those cluster of the cytones are present in the dorsal part of the spinal cord. So those things we will see later on in proper uh, illustration. With proper illustration, now come to the next type of neuron. And what is that? That is bipolar neuron. And that bipolar neuron have two projection coming out. And this type of neuron basically is present in case of the sensory organs like eye. So in the eye, we are going to have the bipolar neuron. Whenever we will discuss the structure, internal structure of the eye, we also have to draw the bipolar neuron. And the next one that is the multipolar neuron which is present in the central nervous system in the other parts of the body, which is this. Okay, so this is the multipolar neuron. So multipolar neuron will have many projections coming out, one exon and many dendrites, right? So if you see this neuron, then we can divide the neuron into two parts. Already I told you what is that? One is the cell body or the cytone and the fibers. This is one fiber, this is another fiber. What is that? One is dendrite, another is exon. Dendrite will always bring sensation stimulus towards the cytone. Okay. So always it is carrying the sense, only it is sensory in nature and the cytone will produce a response okay and that response will come in through this exon so this exon will carry the response okay remember the dendrites that are sensory in nature exons they will be responsive in nature so if it is a nerve fiber made up of dendrites only it will carry the sensation from the sensory organ towards the brain brain have the cytone and the response produced by the cytone which is present in the brain to go to the different effector organs of our body via another type of nerve that will be made up of only exons that will be known as efferent nerve okay so the next one see the dendrite which is carry sense now in the cytone you will see some a uh, granule like structure and those granules they are known as the nissels granule now what is that why it is present c so what is the function of the neuron conduct faster impulse right so whenever a neuron have to conduct this impulse in a lightning speed in a very fast rate the nucleus have to be always free and we know that surrounding the nucle nucleus what we have endoplasmic reticulum okay so this case in this neuron what happened this neuron will not going to have the endoplasmic reticulum surrounding the nucleus what happened yes endoplasmic reticulum is present but it is not surrounding the nucleus so the nucleus is free so that it can uh, undergo faster conduction of the impulse endoplasmic reticulum they are present on the cytoplasm scattered. So that is nothing but the Nissus granule. So Nissus granule is what? It is nothing but the endoplasmic reticulum and RNA. Okay. Next one, see it is going to have one nucleus which is not surrounded by endoplasmic reticulum. Then after that, it is going to have the exon. Now this exon, this is going to carry the response. The response have to be also fast. Okay, suppose you uh, take one hot cup of tea, suppose. Uh, suppose one um, bucket you have taken and it is very hot. You have to remove it. So that sense is coming via the dendrite towards the brain. Brain gives this response. But whenever this response is coming, if it is slow, what will happen? It will already... Um, it will already what it will going to it will burn your skin right so that's why we have one system I will tell you what are all those so the response have to made very fast okay 
so if the response have to be very fast so that's why what happened they actually have some uh, insulated region and those insulation will be nothing but the myelin sheet and that myelin sheet is produced by one cell and that is known as the swan cell i have maybe have, uh, yeah i have written see this is the swan cell so this swan cell is enclosing this exon completely so this is the exon and exon is enclosed by the swan cell from all the sides okay so swan cells cover the exon and wherever the swan cell is present in that region only we are going to have this myelin sheet that blue colored uh, protein actually is the myelin sheet and that myelin sheet is formed by the swan cell if it is the different parts of the body and if it is the central nervous system then which cell which uh, supporting cell forms it it is nothing but the oligodendrites okay now wherever we don't have the myelin sheet what we can call it this is known as the node of Renvier or node of Renvier whatever you can say so this response is actually jumping from one node of Renvier to the next node of Renvier so suppose just imagine you are walking and somebody is jumping and moving and you are in the same race if you are walking just then you will go slow and someone which is jumping is going very fast right so that's the same idea behind that that in case of this node of red wire the impulses jump from one node of red wire to the next node of red wire so that it can make the impulse more faster right so this is about the um, node of red wire then come to the end region and this end region is the exon terminal and exon terminal towards the end it is a knob present this is known as the synaptic knob i told you in between the two neurons the space is known as the uh, synapse and that synapse one chemical move what is that chemical neurotransmitter one example is acetylcholine so that acetylcholine have to be present inside of vesicle in the exon terminal so this exon terminal is going to have this vesicle right so this is the structure of the neuron now come to the nerve section i told already that if a number of nerve exon or dendrite whatever exons if it is made up of only exon that will be known as the efferent nerve it is made up of only dendrites then it will be known as the afferent nerve and if the nerve have both exons and dendrites what we can call it that is known as the mixed nerve okay now just have a look on the section turn the section of a nerve so what are they this blue color structures that are the exons this exons are covered by one membrane that is a tissue connective tissue that is known as endoneurium number of endoneuriums they are covered together by another structure that is known as perineurium so that number of those fibers they actually is known as the fascicule so you just need to know the difference between fascicule and fascicle fascicle is present as the bundle of those nerve muscle fiber in the muscle tissue now in case of neuron it is the fascicule okay so this fascicule is covered by what this is known as the perineuria and number of small those bundles they are covered by another uh, tissue connective tissue and it is known as the epineuria okay and in the uh, middle we have the blood supply that has to be present so it is innervated by the blood so this is known as the nerve this nerve can be of three types what are they they are known as the efferent nerve okay r e n t efferent nerve which is made up of dendrites okay then if it is efferent nerve okay we have another type of nerve that is called as efferent nerve which is made up of exon and we have the uh, mixed nerve and this mixed nerve is made up of both exon and dendrite so we have three types of nerve exon if it is only the bundle of exon that will be efferent which is carrying the responses if it is carrying only the senses, sensory nerve, that will be the efferent nerve, which is made up of the bundle of dendrites. And if it is made up of both exon and dendrites, what we can call it, that is known as the mixed nerve. 
so yeah that's all about the nervous tissue neural tissue hope you have understood so try to understand this is very much important a number of things i have not told you because we have a separate chapter for that that is the neural control and coordination so in that chapter whatever you didn't understand till now those parts we will discuss in the neural control and coordination so that's all about the neural tissue that's all about the tissue of the structural organization in the animal so that's all about it. Thank you.